Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new season of Who Ordered Coffee? I am your host for the first episode of season two, Elliot, and again I am joined by our wonderful other other host we still have we still did a name for that. Uh other, other friends hosts. Uh, Hene and Jonathan. Hello. Hello. I'm excited Good to be good morning. Here. Definitely a big problem. We definitely need to um come up with a little really? title there. Before we go any further, I want to drop in the topic of today, which is we'll be talking all about Marvel and the MCU, discussing all things comic book and movie related. Which will be hopefully a bit of fun for everyone involved. Mm, yes. Yes, I'm excited. I'm, I'm glad- <laughs> Sorry. Took me a second. <laughs> I'm glad that I got at least one uh, mm, yes of approval. I was, mm. Embarrassingly mm. enough, typing in what actually MCU stood for. So it's like, I've seen this well, word a, all the time. That's a great way to begin. Yeah. So, Elliot, would you like to <laughs> enlighten my simple brain and answer my question? But what is the yeah. MCU? Because I know what Marvel is. What is, is the for. MCU? Well, the MCU is just a uh, little acronym for Marvel Cinematic Universe. So it's just talking about the universe of the Marvel Cinema, which is specific to the Disney renditions of oh. the Marvel movies and not mm. anything created by Sony or any other company that might have made some Marvel movies in the past, such as Fox. It sticks within the mm. current line of Disney to streaming or Disney to cinema releases for Marvel through Disney. I think I said That's Disney right. like eight times, but <laughs> you get the idea. I got right. you. That was actually <laughs> actually more informative than Google. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. We love the layman's layman's terms today. It is eight fifteen in the morning, which is unprecedented for us, but but I am quite proud of the fact that we all finally got here. <laughs> this is the first time on Who Ordered Coffee that we actually all need coffee real, real bad. <laughs> yeah, that is true. But I've had a coffee. Well, you <laughs> can't... I'm in the well, midst of drinking um, one, actually. I'd like to point out, yeah. Jonathan, you have to wait until Elliot asks us <laughs> to calm down. <laughs> well, you know what, Hene? <laughs> yes? Jonathan, you get two points. <laughs> I hate morning recordings. Uh, for- the first two points you of the season. It's saltier on the mo- in the morning. I would never be salty. <laughs> yeah, sure. I never in my life. Mm-hmm. So before we jump into our topic uh, of Marvel and the Marvel Cinematic Universe, um, I just wanted to ask first of all if we had any little fun things over the past couple of weeks on our break for our listeners last season. You'll know that we did a segment called Little Big Wins, and this season we are replacing that with Little Fun Things, keeping mm. it funky and fresh for ourselves and for everyone at home. Little Fun Things is basically similar to Little Big Wins, where we described uh, something good or something that we considered a small win, like finding a sock or getting cast at a show as something good that happened during that week. Little Fun Things for this season is something about how uh, just the, the random fun things in life, the random little things that brighten your day or just go, huh, that's odd, and make you laugh or just smile in a way that is less of a personal win and more of a communal, let me share this fun fact or fun, interesting thing that happens. So that is our little fun thing segment. And I'll start with well Hene. Thank you. I'm glad. Hene, do you have a little fun thing? I have a, a little bit of a strange thing. It's kind of fun. We'll go with that. So I'll take a fun thing. Where I live in this area, which will not be said on the show, but I live somewhere. <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> um, there is a man who rides around on a bike. And the weird fun thing that I see when I see him is that he has either birds or birds on his shoulders. Like birds following him or birds traveling on his shoulder, having a free ride. We've nicknamed him the bird man because I have not seen him without his birds. Except one day, I am certain I saw him at Coles. I was like, he looks oddly familiar. But I think I didn't, it didn't, I didn't recognize him quite straight away because I was like, the birds aren't there. So, There's know. no birds. Yeah. <laughs> He's just a man. <laughs> He's just a man. A strange man. And so, but this is the weird thing. He was looking at buying a chicken. And oh. I was like, that should be illegal for you. Because <laughs> that, that's your family. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I I was like, he was looking at buying a living chicken. What's no, wrong? He's just adding to the I family. I mean, like, like um, a no, dead one that gonna... he was going to roast. No, 
Yeah. It wasn't even a roasted chicken. It was chicken you actually have to cook. And I, he was looking at uh, it for a long, I don't mean a very long time, because I, I walked around the whole shops grabbing, you know, what I know he did to do. And when I got back, he was still there looking at this, the, the same chicken in his hand. And I was like, <laughs> are you all good? <laughs> like, have, you consider, good? have you considered that maybe he just never knew that that could be a thing? Maybe. That could be, that'd be He's hilarious. Like, maybe oh, it was his first encounter. That's kind of terrifyingly sad. Yeah, Jonathan says that's hilarious. I think that's absolutely depressing. That is, because, you know, you go about looking after this beautiful wildlife, you go to the shops and you're like, what is this wildlife doing oh, in the freezer? I know, I misinterpreted what Elliot just said. I thought you were saying, imagine if he only just, he never realised the association of birds with him. And oh. <laughs> it was like, that would be oh. so hilarious for him to find out about oh, like, his, his connection with birds. Well, no, but the um, the dead chicken part, that's that's depressing. Yeah, that's- so, but <laughs> I am pleased to announce that I'm, he put it back and he walked oh. away. After maybe okay. 20 minutes He's of very looking conflicted, at it. Though. <laughs> Well, but, clearly um, it was some sort of I think he went discovery. through something. Yeah. Yeah, he's so, gone through something. Poor guy. Well, I, know. I think that was that... a hard day for him, but I found it very weird for me to see this, the bird man looking at, you know, said dead bird to eat. And I was like, are you going to buy that and eat it? Is that cannibalism for you? These were my thoughts yeah. going through my head. These are, these are the thoughts of Birdman. Um, yes, that's Birdman. <laughs> that's Birdman. <laughs> I'm wishing Birdman a good day um, and a I happy life because mm. he's, he's bringing me some fun. So um, I'm going to give it you five po- five points for Birdman oh going gosh, Birdman. through to Hane. Thanks. Thanks, Birdman. You did me a solid. <laughs> yeah, it gets five for Birdman. No, it gets five for Birdman. Yeah, do you Jonathan, have a Birdman, about- Jonathan? <laughs> I do not have a Birdman. You? Do you not have a Birdman? That's a bit of a shame. Yeah. Well, I recommend what, finding a Birdman. Do you have... Do you have any other little fun things that aren't Birdman related? Uh, yeah, I have a, a little fun thing. Uh, I bought the Lego Star Wars um, Skywalker Saga the other week, yeah. the, just last week, and I've just been playing through that. And one funny thing that came up was one day when I logged in, uh, went to log in, there's a there's a login screen where all these characters are sort of just like um, positioned in this little pyramid, <laughs> if you will. Um, and for whatever reason, the character C-3PO, who's just a... Just a human cyborg relation droid. Um, he's just a floating head. What? And I was just like, that's so strange. But he's just a floating head. And now he's, you know, the character would be fine because he's just a robot. So he's, and often on the in the movies, he gets, um, you know, he gets his head removed from his torso and he's often still talking and the funny thing. Uh, but yeah, in, in, for whatever reason, this logo screen had him as a just a floating head one day. He's not normally a floating head, but he was a floating head. I was like, that's just really bizarre. Oh, well. And then that's I log horrifying. into the game. Yeah, it's just a bit, a little slightly terrifying, but it's like, okay. Um, but anyway, I log into the game, and I'm like, surely that's just going to, that was just a weird glitch, right? But no, in the cutscenes in the games, he was also still a floating head. And I was oh like, gosh. this is so weird. His what? model like, didn't load in. Yeah, and oh. I don't know. How, <laughs> I thought cutscenes would be like pre-made video that they would just show. I guess not. I guess they're all just real-time renders because he was just a floating head. And I was like, this is so weird. And then I checked in with a friend that I knew who had the game as well. I was just like, is your C-3PO like a floating head? Like, is this some weird like prank that's just happening today? And he's like, nope, he see- his C-3PO had a body. What? So I don't know what Damn. happened in that one session because his body's come back. But like, he had no body. And not even in the cutscenes, which really sort of spooked me. <laughs> I was like, why? What is happening? Wow, I think you I- got the I- I got rare spurfed. C-3PO. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got a rare C-3PO. I do have a picture... Uh, not of the cutscene. I didn't oh. get to like, take that, but I got a picture of C three PO in the in the logo loading screen. Nice. So I'll include that in the show notes if you remember to do that. But yeah, yeah, sure. that was a little spooky. So that Damn. was my little fun thing. It was fun though. C three PO, buddy. Star Wars is now a part <laughs> of the horror genre. Wow, who knew? <laughs> yeah, really. I'm going to say real quick about the segment that we've, we've turned it into a bit a bit of a spooky side segment already with our with oh. our little fun things and like. These are funny, fun things, but also, wow, they have dark turns. <laughs> yeah, that, that was by accident, honestly. Uh, I'm loving the new flavor. I'm loving it. <laughs> Next week, it'll be like, I found a coconut in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> hey, someone gonna... came to my house and dug up a <laughs> hole and buried a coconut. It was an A. Yeah, I'm totally going to do that, just so you can have another <laughs> story for next week. <laughs> Iconic. Jonathan, I'm going to throw you four points. Oh, okay. For that one, for that fun little. Thank you. Hey, Elliot. Hi. Do you have a fun little story to share with us? Mm. Do I have a fun little story to share with you? 
No? Not stalling at all. <laughs> <laughs> totally not. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, so my very fun thing that I've done, very, very fun. It's not as dark or as depressing. I guess you could call it depressing if you know about my eye prescriptions, but I went and got new glasses over the oh, past yes. week. Wait, wait. I went glasses shopping, checked up on my eyes after two years, and had to travel to five different stores until I found yeah. a pair that I actually enjoyed. <laughs> Five. So, oh, that's a lot. Technically, technically six. So I started off at one oh store, gosh. and then they were like, "Look, we don't normally suggest you go elsewhere, but if you're not liking anything here, we can give you your prescription and head out, have a look around, shop around for you, because you know you know what you want." And I was like, "Cool, thanks." That's nice. And then I went to a whole different shopping center where I was like, "I know they've got a mass of like optometrist stores here." And I went round to five different stores there oh um, <laughs> to find glasses. And I succeeded. I found some glasses hey, there you go. that are being made up at the moment. So very excited to have those in. But yeah, five different stores for glasses. That's my little fun thing. That's a little bit. That's fun. And a bit of a win. <laughs> yeah. A bit of a win, a bit of fun. Yeah, a fun There's win. No, as I say, the only scary thing there is the, uh, the strength of those prescriptions. <laughs> oh, no. They have biceps and biceps. Or? <laughs> I've been wearing prisms for the past two years to help with my eyes focus and stuff, right? Mm. The strength originally was number two. I don't know what mm. that means, but it was two. That's the strength. Mm. Currently, after the checkup, they said, hey, if you go back to prisms, you'll need strength number seven. Oh, like, cool. oh, oh this is bad. That's so, shot up. <laughs> yes. So I'm going for a different kind of prescription. Okay with distance instead to help strengthen those eyes but yes okay. jumping up to seven was a bit of a oh oh yeah oh that's not what you want to hear <laughs> i mean yeah i got my eyes checked i think two years ago and they're like hey your eyes are getting worse still i'm like oh cool <laughs> i thought they would have stopped by now <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah to be fair they um didn't actually like when i got my original pair they didn't go to the full strength because they didn't want it to mm. be like ah uh, yeah so yeah, I think it's a bit of like a mix of like I might have did seven two years ago because my eyes have always been kind of iffy there, but they didn't want to put me on them. Right. So that's that's my fun scary. Yeah, I suck. Eyes not great. Yeah, yeah. you don't, don't suck. Eyes. Your eyes are just having a bit of a time. It, they're just having a field trip. Yeah, they're they're exploring the world, but not wonderful. Not through <laughs> not through the way that they're meant to be. <laughs> no, but I can't wait to see yeah. them. On you because that is always exciting getting new glasses. Yes, I went for a very different style to what I've been wearing for the past two <gasps> years. Ooh, I'm excited. <laughs> which is going to be interesting to see mm, um, yes. and interesting to wear, but I am excited to try them on again when they finally are made up. Yes, it'll, I'm be, excited. it'll be a bit, bit of a fun time. Oh, yeah. Got to send oh, us Stay picture. tuned for Elliot's beautiful new glasses look. My yes. new glasses. Absolutely. Wonderful. So. Let us continue continue on in our journey for true clarity of the Marvel and MCU. And um, I'm going to ask you all a question now. Hey, have you heard of Marvel? No, mm. I don't think I have. No. What Marvel? <laughs> Do you mean like Marvelous? Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Ma- Marvel. M- Mar- M- Which is Marvel. Marvel. Yeah, Marvel's a good friend. Marvel is a good friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have indeed. To be more on a serious note. I have heard of Marvel, and I have also watched Who hasn't? of Marvel. <laughs> there, there would be certainly someone out there, Jonathan, I reckon, <laughs> who would have not heard of Marvel. Will we find them? Probably not. Probably <laughs> not. Please let us know. If somehow you're listening to this podcast. If you're listening to this podcast and this is the first time you've heard of Marvel. Let us know. Please, please, please let us know. That would be actually such, a, such we'll, an honour. We'll have us. you on. Like, that'd be so interesting. What else don't you know? <laughs> Welcome to the new segment of What Else Don't You Know. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'll win. I'll win. <laughs> Wait, is the goal to know nothing or to know... Yes. Early? Oh my gosh, I would be really good at that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, flex, sorry. But I'll be real bad at that segment. Oh, it'll be so hard for me. I know. I'm sorry, Ali. I think this is the one segment that you won't be good at. I know. I'm good at every other one, clearly. Yeah. So when did you hear of Marvel? When? Can you mm. give me a rough exactly. time? Exactly. Just a minute. <laughs> uh, <laughs> About guys, two minutes ago, like this I want podcast. <laughs> Literally. Like, ten seconds. I'm trying to remember. I can hop in if. Yeah, yeah. go for it. Yeah. I'm going to remember. I, yeah, my first experience with Marvel was, well, with Iron Man. 
wouldn't come as much of a surprise to no, many people, no. I'm sure. No, Just the Iron one. Man movies, yeah. They, well, the first one, 2008. But I saw it in like 2010, I think, a couple mm. years after it came out. And yes, definitely, I remember. I remember this, a distinct time in high school where I became quite. Ooh, I, I, I was very fascinated with the visual design of like the armor. And I remember like just drawing. Remember drawing the armor because it looked so cool. And um, and then when they started releasing more, I was like, oh, this is cool. And then they started connecting, and I was like, oh, this is cool. And then I'm sure like millions of other fans that were like people started sort of catching on to the fact that oh, there's something big here. But yeah, that's like my abridged version of my early experience with MCU Iron Man. Damn, nice. Hmm. And A, did you have any any thoughts of when you first encountered this monolith? I think. My first one might have been Captain America. Ooh. So the first adventure, right? So Captain America, the first adventure, yeah. Yeah, so I remember seeing that. Mm. And I was like, hey, he has asthma. Ha <laughs> ha, that's me. <laughs> and then he didn't have asthma. And you're like, I he's know. not me. <laughs> yeah, it was like, betrayal. You got rid of your asthma, become a superhero nerd. <laughs> no. became super jacked. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I remember watching that. And I thought, you know, this is pretty cool. I mean, the part where it turned in to where he was on a spaceship that was like what is going on because you know i was a young kid so i was like what this was a war movie wasn't it <laughs> and then he ends up in you know future or well, his future mm. uh new york and i'm like what <laughs> <laughs> like, this, isn't, this isn't real but then i was like peggy mm. no peggy no so many feelings in that movie for like such a young child as well they did Oh yeah, I was like, there was a lot. There was a whole adventure, and, and that was just the first one. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was a whole adventure. So, did you both then get introduced to Marvel through the MCU? MCU. Is that the yeah. is that the what I'm learning? Here? I, yes. I I am assuming so because I can't yeah. remember any earlier. Yeah, yeah, interesting. It'd be, it'd be the movies for me. Well, then on that, have you ever read Marvel comics or interacted with any other side of the media? Firstly, Marvel comics, but what's the other side? Like, yeah. uh, any games, Marvel games, games. Toys, maybe yeah. Yeah, oh, okay, thank you. any other, like, of the, that expanded kind of area, but yeah. first of all, comics, have you ever read a Marvel comic in your life or followed any of the issues? Unfortunately, no, no, no. but I do, Damn. yeah, but I have watched enough, like, YouTube videos of people doing, like, breakdowns of the movies and stuff, and they reference the comics quite a bit, so I, like, I know, uh, I know bits and pieces of comic, like, comic lore and comic related information just from watching these videos but i can't say of course that i've read any of the actual comics or the any of the issues so i did not do any homework i just watched <laughs> the movies and i was like i'm here for a time if i forget what happens i forget yeah i mean <laughs> well, they're, they're, not to... rec- they're not record they're not essential I, I... viewings <laughs> yeah they're yeah, not essential I'm... of course like <laughs> oh, the mcu but... and the comics are very very different things very different entities yeah Mm. But what led you to not reading the comic? So was it never something that was on your mind? Mm. Like, was there ever a moment where you thought, hmm, maybe, like, I should give these a shot? Um, or did you mm. always just kind of, like, not really yeah. care for them? Mm, it was a bit of, somehow a bit of both. It was like, it, it somehow, it was never really on the peripheral for me. We didn't really grow up with access to any kind of media. <laughs> it was just uh. slightly depressing when they say that sentence out loud. But there's just, you know, when you're a kid, you don't know any better. So you're like... I don't know what TV is. I don't know what films are. It wasn't. It was quite late in my childhood before we were exposed to more pop culture things. So yeah, I just never kind of got really, not didn't really get experienced. Like I didn't really experience comics much, but I do remember seeing pictures of like these superheroes. So I definitely knew of superheroes and like comics. I just never, just never had access to them. So yeah, mm, interesting. Mm, and yeah. Hene, what about you? I never had access to any of the comics ever. So. Growing up, I wasn't actually. I never bought any of my own things because mm. I never actually had money. That's uh, why. relatable. <laughs> um. Yeah. So, like, you know, if your parents don't buy it for you, don't get it. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so I one actually never saw any comic because the yeah. comics that I grew up with was Tintin and oh, sorry, Tintin. not Tintin. That's not a comic. It kind of is, but not really. But um, I meant to say Archie comics. But my siblings loves the phantom comics was a type of superhero oh, I know but i actually phantom, never yeah. read them but no i don't know why i didn't read them but i didn't oh, i don't think i've heard of them or well, maybe i have yeah I and know. there's a fun little story but i'm not sure if you guys want to hear it no please hit us with the stories well jaron will know this but um jaron was furious with dad because one day he found out that dad threw out every single phantom comic except oh, no. for one except because for dad one. decided to get rid of them yeah, we still have one in the house. I don't know which one it is. 
probably will never know because I don't even. <laughs> oh, I, wait, yeah, I've seen this guy right. before. Yeah. And um, Jaren still holds a grudge to this day. <laughs> <laughs> Rightfully so. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. But I'm just so, like. Um, Jaren. <laughs> Sorry, Jaren. Mm, yeah. I just looked up Phantom and yes, I have come across this character before. I just can't. Re- I just don't know where, but I've definitely Phantom, seen him before. Phantom is very much a character that could be found in newspapers. Mm. So he's got, yeah. he's got strips in newspapers and stuff like that. So he, oh, that he's a very cool. common character. Mm. But on all that then, so Hene, you've got a history of reading comics or like graphic kind of based yeah. texts. Jonathan, not so much. Mm. But if I like hypothetically, 100% hypothetically, mm-hmm. if you had the option to, or if I was giving you a Marvel comic now, would you read it, and would you be, like, interested in it, or is it something that just, like, even nowadays, with when you have your own money and you've got your own ability to, do things mm-hmm. still hold you back from reading them, or is it, again, like, would you read it given the option, or, like, is it something that you just don't really care for at all still? Mm-hmm. Despite, I gotta be like, honest. having yeah. an interest in the movies. Yeah. I, yeah, I gotta be honest. I don't think I would really care for it in that, that much. Like, I think if somebody was like, hey, check this out, I'd, I'd definitely give it a look. But yeah, like, just on my own, unprompted, I, I'm, I'm not really, I gotta admit, I, I wouldn't really go look for it. And then, you know, don't come at me, Marvel fans. I'm, I'm just, that's just <laughs> unfortunately how it is. <laughs> I'm gonna watch the movies, I'm gonna watch the TV shows. Hell, I'll even watch all the breakdown videos, but I'm not gonna look at the comics, <laughs> not that much. <laughs> Jonathan's that's like, fair. I will take this <laughs> to the grave. I will never read a comic in my life. <laughs> well, that's not what I said, but. <laughs> no. <laughs> Jonathan's like, hey, 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 hang on. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Sorry. I'm just teasing. But um, I don't know. I think I'd give it a go. But I can't say if I will commit to it just because, you know, I don't have it at the moment. I haven't read one. So it would have to depend on probably which one I read. Yeah, for sure. Obviously, there's a lot of different stories you can pick from the comic. (laughs) Oh, wait, Elliot, I have a question. Would you suggest a starting comic Mm, for for us? Oh, always. I was introduced to Marvel comics. I haven't read heaps of them, but I've read a couple issues. And my favorite series was The Young Avengers, which is... Um, I think I've talked multiple times to you both about before, and I would heavily suggest reading The Young Avengers as a good starting point um, for if you're interested in any comics. The art styles are beautiful, the characters mm. are really fun, and you don't need a lot of Marvel knowledge to be able to jump into it. It's like anything I think that's in there are characters who you already know through like TV the shows, MCU yeah. or the TV shows for any extra characters. Except for like the main characters who you will learn about as you progress because they're introduced in that issue. So it's like mm. it's the first issue for a lot of those characters, and the rest of them it's like, you know, you'll have some sort of reference from other Marvel media that has been more accessible nowadays. Mm. That's a very good one. Or literally any of the Hawkeye series is really, really oh, yeah. strong. Um, yes. I really enjoyed reading the Matt the Fraction. Matt, by Matt Fraction. Is that one? Yes. Yeah. Mm. I heard about that one, yeah. A very, very fun series. So those two were very much uh, go-tos when I was younger, when I started, um, and yeah. the ones that I recommend. I've also read a bunch of Spider-Man and Daredevil comics, oh, which are also very fun, of course, but those two are very much like, they're pretty, you can keep them pretty separate from most other universes, whereas Spider-Man and Daredevil start to get hippity pickly <laughs> very, very quickly. So those Spider-Man. are my recommendations. Yeah, literally. It's it's the Spider-Verse. Like, that's the name of the comic series. So yeah, it's like, it's good fun. I do enjoy comics personally, but I also agree that nowadays I haven't read a comic in quite some time, and I don't know if I would necessarily go back to reading comics or not. Despite enjoying them, the medium feels a bit like, not outdated, but just more, like, it's like, it's a steep learning curve with little payoff. Right, yes, this is interesting, interesting. Hmm. Elliot, did you have a, uh, well, what's your experience, like early experience with Marvel? I'm assuming then it's the comics, right? Well, no, actually. So my first oh. experience with Marvel was with Iron Man. Uh-huh. It was either Iron Man or Thor was one of the first ones that I watched. Um, but I'd already been kind of attuned to Marvel, at least, because I grew up watching the... Oh, the TV shows? Well, not the MCU um, or the TV shows, but the... Um, old Spider-Man 
movies. So obviously, um, oh, Tobey Maguire yeah. and yeah. Andrew Garfield. Mm, they course. would have been my very first introduction was the Tobey Maguire movies, um, and also the old Daredevil movie. Oh um, yes, with Ben, uh, ben Affleck. <laughs> yes, and yes. also John Favreau. <laughs> Oh, funnily enough, interesting. You don't yeah. know that one. Yeah, it's it's quite meta. <laughs> Very John much. John so. plays a character where another Daredevil shows up as well, <laughs> a different Daredevil. <laughs> a different Daredevil. Literally, it'd actually be so funny if they did a multiverse crossover because they can do that now. <laughs> it would Iconic. be like John Favreau and John Favreau. <laughs> <laughs> as they should. Well, not Don. Yeah, I mean John Favreau playing two different characters that he's previously played. Uh, from no, the, isn't John yeah. Favreau playing John Favreau? John Favreau as John Favreau. And John Favreau as John Favreau. John Favreau is playing John Favreau <laughs> together. It's, the most <laughs> it's the perfect movie. It's the, the perfect, perfect movie. We Make made it, it happen. <laughs> Do we get credits then for like coming up with this brilliant idea? If not credits, but I'll give Jonathan three points for uh, the John Favreaus. But I came up with the John Favreau playing John Favreau. Well, you can get one point for John Favreau being John Favreau. <laughs> Thank you. I'll take it. <laughs> Even my sarcastic voice. Oh my God. I know. That's all I list um, him here for. Elliot turning into more a sarcastic Elliot. But like I for. Early morning, Elliot is not having anyone's shit. <laughs> I mean, that's fair and I respect that. That's when I started watching the Marvel movies and stuff, which is, I mean, they're fun. They're good times. To an extent. To an extent. Ooh. I think that's... Extent, okay. And I think I'll yeah. leave that cliffhanger there um, Ooh, on... We'll segue back extent. to this at some point. Yeah. And we'll segue back. Or maybe not. Or maybe, maybe not. not. You have to listen to the whole episode. So, <laughs> um, another segment that we wanted to introduce for this new season, so we've got a couple segments for this one, was Song of the Week. Mm. So, Song of the Week, we are all obviously composers and music graduates, and one of the things that we wanted to kind of vibe with and test out with y'all was recommending a song each week that we kind of want to share or uh, uh, vibing with currently, like, just a song that, you know, if you've got some spare time today or during the week or listen to this episode, go have a listen, write these down, check it out. They'll probably be in our show notes. So just, like, a recommendation from all of us for something fun and funky to listen to. So that's what Song of the Week is. Jonathan, do you want to start us off with a song to listen to? Yeah, yeah, certainly. Well, uh, well, I mean, immediately I have to preface this by saying it's not a song in the sense that it has lyrics, just because I don't listen to all that many songs. Uh, the very last thing that I listened to is probably, uh, if I can pronounce this properly, Sono di Volare. I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry. That was, I believe that's Italian, I think. Ooh. Oh, oh my gosh, I really don't know. But it means uh, The Dream of Flight by Christopher Tin. Uh, and it's from his newest album, To Shiver the Sky, The Dream of Flight by Christopher Tien from his album, To Shiver the Sky. It's a really great orchestral piece, uh, very, you know, in typical Christopher Tien fashion, really epic, big choirs. If you don't know, Christopher Tien is the composer of Baba Yetu, a very famous um, oh, video God, game soundtrack that for Civilization Four. Yeah, um, very famous because it's performed all over the world by choirs and orchestras alike. Uh, and even recently, I got to see that performed live by uh, ooh, the West Australian Philharmonic. Is that right, Hanay? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. The West Coast Philharmonic. There it is. There it is. There whoa, it whoa. is, yes. And of course, Hane was in that orchestra as well, playing a lead viola. Well done. Clap, 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 clap. It was a, a fantastic that. performance. But yes, uh, so this is the same composer. And so if you are even somewhat familiar with Barbie A2, tune into this piece. Um, you will not be disappointed. Very good. Mm, that one's a real bop. Mm. I, I actually I've sold that. that in choir. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, yes, as, as did I. Nice. Mm. Actually, a uh, fun fact, our choir group, just that um, our teacher was like, we were going to sing it for the concert and then our teacher took it away from us and she gave it to the year below. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> that was such a stab in the back. But yeah, hopefully I've uh, convinced someone. Yeah. You convinced me. I'm going to go check it out again. I yeah. love it. It's a very, I'm going to back Jonathan up on this. It's a good one. It's a fun vibe. It's a fun song. I will not forget not being able to sing it in high school. <laughs> oh, absolutely duped. Absolutely duped. Hene, what about you? Do you have a fun little song for us? Uh, the song I will be recommending today is Forgotten Love by Aurora, who is a Norwegian uh, artist. Oh, of and course. I am currently obsessed with her. I have listened to... Actually, this is a weird thing about me. I normally don't listen to whole albums because I don't enjoy most of the pieces. I came very close to liking every single piece of one of her albums. I love it. I'm obsessed with her voice. I think. Yes. 
She reminds she me amazing. of like a little bit of a spiritual elf. I don't know why. She gives me that spiritual vibe. Elf. <laughs> yeah, but like she speaks like that. She sings like that. And I'm just like, it's very, I don't know how to explain it, but I enjoy listening to it. Do you think um, perhaps? Like whimsical? Yeah. <laughs> whimsical. That's it. Whimsical. Thank you. Mm. That's the perfect yeah. word. It's whimsical. Thank you, Elliot. You're welcome. Elliot, oh, do you have a recommendation? Yeah, I feel like mine's going to be in a very, very different direction. Oh, um, yeah. But like, oh, oh we surprised. Right musical? Can you imagine? Oh, <laughs> can you imagine? <laughs> Is it rent? No, I can't imagine. Is it great? Oh, is all um, of rent? <laughs> it's all of rent. No, so it's yes. currently not. I'm not recommending a full musical. What? Today. Who are you? I know. Jonathan, this isn't Elliot. Get out of there. <laughs> I know. Who are you? I'm, I'm the worst. It's a scroll. Aha, Marvel Tone. So, but That's I am. How we know. If it helps, I am um, recommending something very in line with uh, stuff that you probably would not listen to, mm. but you two that mm. I do listen to often. Um, it's currently one of my favorite songs that I've been like blasting on repeat, and I'm not quite sure why. It just really goes. It's called "Sex with a Ghost," and it's by Teddy Hyde. How about that? Huh, I've never heard of that. It's a very fun song. It's just about, I mean, very obviously, having sex with a ghost. Nice. <laughs> I feel like I've heard this title. It's a great number. It's just, it's fun. They've got like this really one cool like sound effect halfway through where it sounds like skeletal like. But you like you know that scene Ooh. in Corpse Bride where it's like the mm. skeletons will have a good jam party. It feels like that, and it's like spine tingling kind of like high hits that feel like something like playing a marimba of bones or something like that. Ah, it's yes. like super okay. high. Yeah. It's really like, weird. Like somewhat like a xylophone, maybe. maybe. Yeah, but it's like That's obviously similar. it's electronically produced. Obviously, mm. like not obviously for you, but obviously in the sound. Like when you hear it, it'll yeah. make sense. I really enjoy like it's got the all those kinds of small things in it that just kind of heighten the song and make mm. it feel less just like samey. Right. And like yeah, I just find it it's just a very nice it's just a nice song. It's just a lot of fun. It's one of those ones that I'll blast in the car on the way to work to just vibe to. So that's my song of the week is Sex with a Ghost. Very good. How about that? How hmm. about so it? Do let us know. Yeah, do let us know if any of our recommendations this is to listen now. <laughs> if any of our recommendations pique your interest and you check them out. Yes. As we discuss music and the such, um, I want to move on to our game segment, which of uh-huh. course we are bringing back from our last season. So this game segment is going to be a bit hard, I hope. A little bit different, a little bit something that we haven't done before, but I think something that will be a bit of fun, at least for me, which is of course you <laughs> give. I need you to give me your acapella. Rendition mm. of the Marvel MCU theme song <laughs> or the opening theme for Marvel. Do you, you mean can... like do we have to put words to this or do we just like <laughs> just sing just, like maybe the instrumentation? However, yeah, just do do do, sing it along if you want to like clap whatever. Okay, I however you totally think. read this wrong because <laughs> <laughs> I read it last night. No, you sent it this morning. I read it this morning and I read it as sing. Um, make up lyrics and <laughs> sing a new Marvel song about like one of the shows, and I was panicking. I felt sick. I mean, like, Ooh! if you've got something, I think it'll. I think it'll, be, I think it'll be really good. If it would be awesome. Sh- I think Elliot would be proud of me, but also Elliot would hate me because I'd probably get it all like. Sorry, let me just fast. let me just um sing a song about. So now it's in our sh- in our notes, so maybe that's what we should be doing instead. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I wasn't there two the notes, seconds ago. The, the notes are law. If it's in the no- if it's in the show notes, you got to do it. <laughs> you got to do it. <laughs> it's a prophecy. It's in- <laughs> um, all right, but well, let's give this a shot. So I'll I'll throw Hannah. I'm gonna throw you into the deep end. Sure. First. I can swim. You can swim. 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 So I would like oh. your rendition. Yeah. How- of the Marvel MCU theme song. So, the one that starts off the movies, correct? The one that starts off the movies, the one that starts making off that sure. I'm films. glad you're not picking, like, a character theme, because I wouldn't know any oh, of them at this point. I don't even know the opening theme, to be honest. Oh, really? I do. I have well, it. that's good. Jonathan, stop. I can hear you singing it. Um, no, I'm humming the Captain America's theme. Thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> you I can just hear would you going, know Duke. that. Duke. Oh, but Alan Duke. Silvestri, you guys. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, are you ready? Negative one point to Jonathan for being a nuisance. Um, oh, there's an anvil that I know. That's fine. I'll make it up. Just with you've my got point. this. 
You've got this today. Crackety crack. Wait, let me just have a sip of water because I've still got coffee clogging up my Oh, please. Pores. Hydrate. Yeah, I shouldn't have been drinking coffee before the segment. Terrible idea because it's milk. Okay. We ready for? Let's go. And there's a drum kit. Boom. Choo, choo, choo. Yeah, that's it. I can't do all 500 <laughs> instruments. <laughs> Is that enough? Or do you, you want me to keep sure going? Oh, hell try. No, that was pretty solid. Well done. Like, you well got done. Thank you. That's great. Solid. I love the enthusiasm. It was great. I love the enthusiasm. I, um, I think there was some incorrect patterns in there. There was. I do apologize. My brain but, decided to do know, something a little funky. There was there was some fun creativity. So um, I'm going to bump you. up your points just a tad for you in okay. celebration. So I'm pretty proud of that. I thought that could have gone a lot worse. But um, when I got to drum kit solo, I was like, I can't do drum kit noises in my mouth. So very fair. But, well, I've given you an extra 10 points for your nice. strong you. attempt. Um, oh, awesome. Bringing me some joy with your enthusiasm. So thank nice. you for that rendition. Yeah. I very much, very much applaud. Um, which, of course, means, Jonathan, it is your mm. turn yes. to grace us. Yes. Uh, well, okay. Uh, not to be that guy. But, oh, uh, he's but, being the guy. I've been that guy. Uh, H- 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 you're, you, what you actually sung was the Avengers theme. Yeah, wasn't that what but, Elliot? But that's not for? that's not the Marvel logo theme. That's not the Marvel theme song. I've had it play in the Mo- Marvel Marvel logo. I don't play that during the logo because that's not exclusively. Oh, Avengers I've heard it a few times in the logo. I'm pretty sure, but I do apologize. Oh, okay. Well, then, Elliot, uh, what are you? What exactly are you looking for? Are you looking for the the theme that song that they play during the logo? Really, I'm looking for what is known as Marvel opening theme. The opening thing, yeah. By Brian Are you going to show, or maybe Elliot will then disclose another few points to whoever actually was the closest, which will be you. But, <laughs> um, I'm just completely wrong. <laughs> it'd be <laughs> then uh, Jonathan proceed to sing Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan, I'm giving you. I'm taking away another point for you. A constant arguing with me on this one. <laughs> I'd like to just hear you do this number, please. <laughs> yeah, you're stalling, Jonathan. <laughs> Um, so it starts on the strings, it goes do 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 it's the really fast strings. And then the main theme is big drums all the end. There you go. That's that's it. Yeah, I recognize that. Not about it. Jonathan, I'm going to be honest with you, mate. It might have been accurate. But not about the enthusiasm. <laughs> it was so boring, man. Like, <laughs> come on. Yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> and maybe that's wow. a fault of the music itself. But Jonathan, Do you want to try it? Do you want to try again? Try again. Try a different approach. Well, let's try this. Are you getting your keyboard out, <laughs> Jonathan? <laughs> you said a different approach. <laughs> it's... Acapella! Oh, I want to see where this goes. There you go. <laughs> um, I gotta be honest, I couldn't hear any of it because Discord, <laughs> I think, cut it all out. Oh, but I'm gonna imagine did. it was beautiful. No. I can imagine it was an amazing yeah. rendition, so I'm gonna move you up with one point. <laughs> I think it would have been great as well. But unfortunately, Discord does hate wow. half the things that we do on here. Correct. <laughs> but I'm, once you send us through that recording, I can't wait to hear it. <laughs> yeah, eventually. <laughs> I can't so wait to butchered. I've oh. never played it before. <laughs> I'm literally trying to figure it out. I can't. I can't. I can tell what you're doing because you're getting further away from the mic. And I was like, get back here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, with that, that fun. Let's, let's jump into our question We've explored the Marvel opening theme now a little bit. Mm. What do we think of the general Marvel music? Mm. Hey, do you want to take this first? Yeah, sure. Um, oh, I know. I already know what Jonathan's going to say. But, what? Um, well, <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to say. <laughs> oh, well, we had this conversation a few weeks ago, so maybe you just don't remember it. We had something similar, but it's not exactly on Marvel, but that's okay. I personally quite enjoy the Marvel soundtracks, to the ones that I remember at least. 
<laughs> I'd like to point out that in Guardians of the Galaxy, mm. I actually like the soundtrack for that. I'm not talking about oh, the yeah. pop music that they play. Mm. I'm actually talking about the soundtrack, the orchestra oh, one. Yes, I do remember Because there is one theme that I am the, I love to hear, which is Black Tears, where um, they're holding the stone and he's thinking back to his mum and, you know, he's like, Peter, my hand, hold my hand. That's a very <laughs> beautiful climactic moment in the music, and I really appreciate that. So I I vibe the, the music most of the time, from what I remember, at least. Nice. Yeah, that's my that's my TED talk. What what a nice TED talk, <laughs> Jonathan. What about you? I'm quite a big fan of Alan Silvestri's orchestration and his writing. So, um, whenever he's on the he's on the show, whenever he's doing the music, so he did music for Captain America: First Avenger, the original, the first Avengers movie. And then, of course, um, Endgame and Civil War. No, not Civil War. Uh, Endgame and the one before it, Infinity War. So, yeah, I quite like when he's on. But then there's also some other composers who have been on to do some cool stuff as well, like um, Lord Ludwig Göransson. I can never say his name properly, for Black Panther. So he did some really cool stuff there. Oh, that was cool. <laughs> yeah, the cool, uh, the the African drumming and all that. Mm. And then, uh, who else? Oh, no, that's, a, that's probably it for me. <laughs> but I, I do it. quite <laughs> like, yeah. Alan Silvestri and his work, so yeah, fair. See, my personal take is somewhere on the negative side. I should mm. say, if it wasn't clear by my lack of knowledge surrounding the Marvel opening theme, which I would never have guessed. <laughs> it's. I think I resonate with Hanae's like when I remember it. I'm sure mm. it's great, mm. but the music is just so forgettable. And mm. like this is yeah, I've heard of this sentiment before. Yeah, it's just so forgettable. It sounds like at this point. It's so generic and just mm. so same z. So when something different comes along, like the the soundtrack in Guardians of the Galaxy is one that is stronger, I feel, because of the music that is surrounding it, at, like the pop songs that surround it, because it's like different and flares up the rest of the music to make it feel more interesting. Or Black Panther, of course, has like its own complete style, um, mm. which feels very different to the rest of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Like I just feel like the music is so the same you could substitute any of the numbers for any other film <laughs> mm. like it doesn't it doesn't feel tailored yeah interesting i agree yeah. i'm sure like while watching it it's impactful but it's not something that is rememberable right yes, yes. it's good for the moment but not for the long term and like i guess marvel fans aren't going into the movies for the music necessarily mm. but it is just a bit of a shame i personally find to be like oh it could like there's so much wasted potential when you see such amazing soundtracks like Into the Spider of Us, um, which has an amazing Daniel like d- yeah, like it, oh, it's amazing the way that he used the sound to create such an atmosphere. Mm. That but, one stuck with me as well. I remember that for a while after the movie. Yeah, yeah. Like, even when you were talking about it in um the composition workshop, I was like, I remember that. Oh, that was good. I agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, one like, was very like very it stuck. Cool. Yeah, mm. I feel like there's a there's a lot of composers who are stuck or forced to um, write in a certain way for genre, and I feel mm. like Marvel is like I think Marvel is that in a lot of ways, personally, which kind of leads me yeah. on to like the the market being oversaturated, the amount of Marvel MCU movies is kind of being a bit draining. The fact that like as I said, like we've all been fans of Marvel at some point or enjoyed the films, but like not. I'm the only one who's read comics, and even then, I wouldn't go back to them now. Mm. Like, that whole genre just feels so tried, and almost, like, for me at least, it feels exhausting to think about. Like, I still love a lot of the films, and if I went back and watched, like, Iron Man 1, or, like, Iron Man 3, but specifically not Iron Man 2, (laughs) I would probably have a good time. But, like, it's just that kind of, the general idea of going and watching a new Marvel movie feels tiring and there's nothing enough. in the music yeah. or mm. in any other sense that i'm like really drawn to doing so okay and that's my part like what what do y'all think what yeah. uh, do y'all have a similar kind of notion like where where do y'all lie and did you want to jump in or no you go first you i think a, you have a more solid idea i uh, have not a thought not a thought at the moment <laughs> well, i'm sure you think of something hopefully <laughs> Uh, my my thoughts with MCU, I understand all of the perspective of like it's oversaturated and all, and that it's sort of starting to you know get, become very samey. I can definitely see all that. My 
my fe- personal feeling with MCU is that on some level I enjoy it and because it's a you know tried and true method I am continuing to be able to enjoy this aspect of MCU that I do enjoy and so whenever I go back to moon and watch new MCU content it's like well you know I, I can expect some this thing that I enjoyed so it's it's on some level it's a bit reassuring to know that it will perhaps always be there in some some capacity but I also feel like MCU has been trying to take steps to inject a bit of new ideas or to try different things and i just think mm. i think it's happening but perhaps not as quite obviously or such big steps as people would appreciate and so i definitely understand that perspective as well i i was going to say yeah. before about the music for example her name is pinard toparak i believe i'm really sorry if i've butchered her name she's a turkish composer who did the music for captain marvel i was of the opinion that hey, it's pretty cool it's, it's great it's got a really interesting um, use of like the the melody she's crafted for the main theme. I've listened to interviews and read about the thought that she's put into creating that motif. Um, the whole minor seventh, you know, the very first two notes she picked out a minor seventh as the very first two notes for the main theme. She wanted that theme to be able to stand on its own in the briefest form possible, you know. And I appreciate the kind of thought that's gone into it compositionally, and then the kind of you know um, bringing like these '90s influence because of the fact that Captain Marvel's a '90s character. Like when she is introduced in the in the movie. She lands on Earth in the 90s. So I appreciate all the little nuances and stuff, but from a general audience perspective, who's not a composer, who doesn't go deep diving this kind of information, it can be very easily sort of like washed out, you know, and lost, even though it's there. And so, yeah, I can sort of say like, yes, from a general audience perspective, it seems all really same to But if you deep dive it, if you listen closely, it is that, you know, they are actually putting in quite a lot of effort to put this stuff together. Yeah. But it's that sort of thing of like, you have to know to know like it's not obvious enough that new things are happening so i yeah i'm a, li- I'm a little bit sort of divided in the sense that i can see both sides i, I agree yes. that yeah if you look at the mcu you know, sort of soundscape as a whole it is very much the same because you know 90 percent of it is the same there is a 10 percent which is not the same which is great but at the end of the day it's still only 10 percent. so it's like while it is ha- while the change is there the new stuff is there it's just not enough hmm. and it's like the set of politics yeah. <laughs> right yeah yes <laughs> i suppose so small yeah. changes but nothing large yeah yes i see i see you right but then there's that whole argument of like well I, I, like i only said initially i kind of enjoy it because there are things that i know that are always there like and that might just be you know <laughs> my sort of anxiety brain being like li- liking what's comfortable you know <laughs> it's like Oh, oh there's sure. all, there'll like, always yeah, there'll always be a big CGI just, battle. We love that. There'll be always cool action scenes. Yay! There'll be there's always there'll always be like a cool hero's journey. Oh, for sure. Like I do. Yeah. I, don't get me wrong. I do enjoy those <laughs> things specifically. Like if I'm wanting to watch those things, I know exactly where to go. <laughs> exactly. I, I yeah. gotta hit up those Marvel movies. Like yes, I'm all about it. <laughs> and I do appreciate the amount of like small changes that they've been making, even in like like TV series and stuff. Like One Division mm. was very very fun, very unique in its style, and yeah. like the new Thors, all of that directing, like, all those directing choices have been Mm. very, very fun. Like a YTD, yeah. Yeah, he's been absolutely smashing it. So, like, I do enjoy the fact that they have been starting to shift to be more tonally appropriate for each character, or, like, each different movies have been more specific. Yeah, like, I do really enjoy that, while still having the same tone and the same kind of Mm. energy of being, like, this is still a Marvel movie, and I hope that they can kind of hone in on that soon and make that more of their brand than just, I don't know, Infinity War. <laughs> or the like Age of Ultron. Age of Ultron is more Age of Ultron like, is the yeah. big one. Yeah, the one that gets <laughs> bashed on a lot. <laughs> yeah. But Hene, what about you? What's your mm. what's your hot take? I think my hot take is we started segueing a little bit into the TV shows. Mm. And I remembered I actually watched WandaVision over the holidays and Loki. So I'll mm. start with Loki first. They included some Viking Noidic uh, inspired music in some bits and I was like oh yeah there it is that's so good and I got that's me really good. excited because you know um, them being Viking gods it was very appropriate for that and I really vibed with it because I was like feels like you did your research you wanted it to be more appropriate to the character thank you yeah that's <laughs> we've good won fun. the vision though I actually didn't enjoy the series at the end oh the, the last I... few episodes or the whole thing uh Kind of the whole thing, but more of the last few episodes, I was like, mm, you're really not helpful. You know, I, you know, I just didn't, I personally yeah, didn't like it. But I won't go that's into fair. that too much because I want to talk about the music. Yeah. I got really excited because they, one of the episodes they included Bewitched. 
the, yes. yeah, the bewitched vibe. And I was like, that's my childhood right there. Like, and there was, there was Brady Bunch. I was like, that's my other childhood right there. I loved that. That got me really excited that they were including all these old shows. But um, it just got me really excited because I was like, oh, there's that show I remember watching. That was good. Oh, there's that other one. And they included similar music to go with it. They did, um, they've changed the music, the costumes to fit that show. And I was like, that's great. I love it. Yeah. The whole show, the whole thing on itself, I just didn't enjoy because, I don't know, it just rubs me the wrong way. Like, I wish there was more of a proper fight, I think, between her and the witch and more yeah. of an actual lead up. I feel like that was a bit too I, abrupt. Yeah. I feel I like think they could have done that I, a lot better. I think a big, that's a big agreement in fans of that show is like the last two episodes kind of just felt like they had to bring on the big CGI fight that Marvel has. I know, and I feel like and they could have straight a bit. done that a little, yeah. Yeah, I, but that's all right. Overall, I enjoyed the first few episodes quite a lot. The yeah, show was quite fun bad. in general mm-hmm. for me. I think um the WandaVision song actually got really annoying in the end, though. <laughs> the actual theme song for the beginning. I was like, oh. Uh, I'm sick of that. Dun, Can you dun, stop? Dun. Yeah, stop it. Oh, <laughs> can't. It, I'm really. It makes me angry. I'm like, oh, I don't want to hear that. Then there's again. the one, one division theme, which is different to the theme song. Yeah, which is quite spooky. I quite like. Yeah. Mm. Stuff back. But the uh, the upbeat happy one. I was like, you're really <laughs> irritating me now because <laughs> it's not the vibe that I want. Stop it. All right. <laughs> well, how come now our, you're singing? <laughs> for our final question of the evening, before we begin to wrap up. Yeah. What? Avenger character would you be and why? But mm. wrong answers only. Wrong answers only. Aww. Now, well, do, do you, you already mean, have like, an from answer, the Avengers Elliot? roster? Oh, yes, yeah, Elliot. Sorry, you give us you maybe s- an example. Like, do you already have an answer for yourself that we might be able to be inspired by? Like, oh, that's just the root, like the answer your type of going with. Yeah, for sure. Um, I That'd would be, be Thor <laughs> because I'm Australian. <laughs> How is that a wrong answer though? <laughs> because Thor, Thor himself is not Australian. Like, that's a dumb reason. Sure, the actor. <laughs> oh, the is, actor. Like... Yeah, Chris. <laughs> oh, I see what you mean now. Gotcha. I love that, actually. That's great. I want to give you a few points for that. Can I give you five? Yeah, sure. I'll I love take that. Because I, like, I was like, yeah, that's right. And then you're like, no. And I'm like, oh. Yep. So, oh. so Jonathan, what about you? What Avenger yeah. character would you be and why? Wrong answer only. Wrong answer only. Oh, mm, um, I would be Ant Man, <laughs> Scott Lang. Because Why? I'm, <laughs> because I'm tall. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Wait, <laughs> Wrong I'm gonna give you four points for that. That's fun. That's awesome. <laughs> and then what about you? I'm gonna be Iron Man because I am a billionaire. Nice. Nice. I believe it. <laughs> I believe it. I, I, believe I would it. love to believe it too. Do you guys want some uh, money and I'll throw a party for us? <laughs> oh, I can't wait. That'll be so much fun. Imagine being rich. <laughs> Imagine. Oh, if you want to imagine being oh, rich, dream. why don't you tune in to one of our previous episodes where oh, we talk yes. about endless uh, possibilities. Uh, mm. I think that was entitled Castles, Corgis and Camping? Camping and Corgis. Oh, my bad. Yeah. It, it's the three C's. Mm, the three, <laughs> three C's. Yeah. C's. Well, as we wrap up today, um, I've got one, one very final question for you. Of course... The amazing question, the question for all questions, the question to end all questions, the only question that really, really, really matters. What are you currently drinking? Mm. I am indeed drinking coffee. <laughs> I wanted to say 42 just for funsies, but um, wow, I will thanks. not. Already did. <laughs> it was a very cold morning, as you know. I did not want to leave my nice warm bed. <laughs> it was so warm. So I was like, you need a warm coffee, Hene. So I had some iced coffee in the fridge and I was like, no, no, terrible idea. Stay away from that. So I indeed made myself a nice hot coffee. It's a little bit cold now because it's been chilling in the room with me. Uh, I made myself a French vanilla latte and it was delicious. Ooh. And it was made, brewed in the cup that Jonathan gifted me for my birthday. Thank oh, you, yes, Jonathan, right. for sponsoring Wonderful. my Wonderful. Sponsoring your cup. Yes, you're welcome. Incredible. Jonathan, what about you? Yes, uh, I had, so I drank throughout the course of the show, Nescafe again, Nescafe Gold. Almond latte, vegan friendly. <laughs> oh, changing yes. it up. That's all right. It's quite nice, actually. So, there you go. Would you recommend? I would recommend, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so I try it try out. Try that one out. Try it out. Yeah. Hell yeah. Friendly. What well, questions of all questions? Do you have an answer? I've been drinking a cappuccino 
Very homemade. Good. Oh, nice. Living my best life. Oh. It was a nature's way or something all organic coffee blend and just some bonsai milk. Ah, uh, yes, mm. the bonsai. So, back for the third week. The bonsai back, back again. I feel like you're going to say bonsai, like the little tiny plant. <laughs> that is the play on words. Tiny- that's a, I'm imagining little tiny uh, coffee uh, milk cartons growing from this little tiny tree. And you're like, here's my little drop of milk for today. Adorable. I love that. That's great. If I could give That's that to picture. you, I would. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate That's it. That's a picture. Who's going to take on the picture? <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Well, that is the questions. That's it. That's all we got. That was, that was the episode, guys. Yeah, get out of here. <laughs> that was the episode. <laughs> I should tally up our points So for our hmm. points this week. We have me, obviously, winning on five points. Uh, oh, yeah. Well done, Elliot. <laughs> Thank you. I knew you could do it. Fantastic. Thank you so much. <laughs> We've got Jonathan on 12 points in second place. And, of course, Hene is our winner this evening on a solid Ooh. 20 points, which, as tradition, means that Hene will be hosting next week's episode. So congratulations, Hene. Thank you. I Congrats, couldn't have done it without you two, and I couldn't have done it without the most important person in the room, which was Minnie barking in my microphone at one point of this episode <laughs> that you, you may or may not hear. Because Jonathan thank is an amazing editor. Lift, lift. Wonderful. All right. Well, thank you all for joining us and listening in. This is directly to the listener. You. Hey, you, the listener. You. Thank you. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you joining us. Mm. If you do you have a listen to those songs that we've recommended, then, you know, let us know what you think and give us any feedback on the episode, any thoughts on the MCU you might have yourself. This has been Who Ordered Coffee? I have been your host, Elliot, joined by, once again, Hene and Jonathan. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.